Hello friends, welcome back to yet another brand new episode of Kel Stories. This week, we will be covering the effect of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war on the world of sports. So, without any further ado, let's get started. It's not just the stock markets and oil prices that have been affected by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but also the sports industry. The International Olympic Committee said in a statement that it strongly condemns the breach of the Olympic truce by the Russian government. It was the third Russian breach of the Olympic truce in the past 14 years. Russia invaded Georgia during the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing and annexed Crimea shortly after the end of the 2014 Winter Olympics in Russia. The attacks on Ukraine came just few days after the conclusion of the Beijing Winter Olympics. The conflict has already had severe repercussions in the sports world ranging from football to tennis to Formula 1. Starting with football first, St. Petersburg in Russia was scheduled to host the 2022 UEFA Champions League final on 28th May. But following an emergency meeting, European football's governing body has confirmed that the match will now be played at the Stade de France in Paris. Russian energy firm Gazprom is a major sponsor of European football, including the UEFA Champions League. UEFA is currently facing mounting pressure to terminate the ties with the firm. And just as we are making this video, big news coming in guys. Russia has been expelled from the 2022 World Cup and its team is suspended from all international football competitions until further notice. After its invasion on Ukraine, FIFA announced with a joint statement with UEFA. This means Russia will not play the World Cup qualifying games against Poland, Sweden and Czech Republic. Also Russian club Spartak Moscow has been disqualified from Europa League. On the other hand, the domestic football league in Ukraine has been officially suspended due to President Volodymyr Zelensky's decision to impose martial law. This means that clubs like Dynamo Kyiv and Shakhtar Donetsk will not be able to play for a minimum of 30 days. Brazilian players from Shakhtar Donetsk and Dynamo Kyiv have released a video pleading for help from their home country's government as they seek to leave Ukraine. Stars such as David Neres, Ismaili and Dodo are all stuck playing for Shakhtar Donetsk and are unable to return home. Just few months earlier, Ukrainian Yuri Vernidub went down in history last September when his side Sheriff Teraspol enjoyed an unlikely 2-1 victory over Real Madrid at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu in the Champions League group stage. But today, the Sheriff boss has joined with the Ukrainian army to fight against Russia. Moving outside Russia and Ukraine, the attack has also caused waves in European football clubs in what was arguably the biggest game of the Europa League knockout round playoff between Barcelona and Napoli, both sets of players posed in front of a banner which read Stop War. German club FC Salka 4 have also moved to cut ties with Russian energy firm Gazprom. Schalke, one of Germany's most supported football teams have removed the name of sponsors Gazprom from their shirts. In England, Premier League giants Manchester United have terminated the sponsorship agreement it had with Russian airline Aeroflot. UK Labour MP Chris Brand urged the British government on Friday to seize the assets of Russian billionaire and Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich. Meanwhile, Roman Abramovich has handed over the stewardship and care of Chelsea to the trustees of the club charitable foundation, effectively giving all decision-making powers to the six figures on its board. During the Premier League match between Everton and Manchester City, Ukrainian player Zinchenko was seen in tears as players and fans from both the sides showed their support for Ukraine. Several footballers around the world have criticized Putin's move and called for peace. Russian and Dynamo Moscow striker Fedor Molov became the first sportsman from Russia to speak out on Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine on social media. In a very brief but powerful post on Instagram, Molov uploaded a black square with the caption, No War. Meanwhile in Greece, Italian club Atlanta defeated Greek club Olympiakos in the Europa playoff with a world-class performance, but it was Ukrainian footballer Malinowski's celebration which won the hearts of football fans and went viral all across the world. After his goal, the Ukrainian international revealed a no war in Ukraine message under his t-shirt. In Portugal, the whole world witnessed a heart-touching moment. Ukraine's Roman Yaramchuk was moved to tears 
when he was given a standing ovation from Benfica supporters after he was brought onto the field in the 62nd minute and given the captain's armband. Now coming to F1, the Formula 1 committee has confirmed it cancelled the Russian Grand Prix which was supposed to take place on 25th September in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The cancellation comes after reigning Formula 1 world champion Max Verstappen and former champion Sebastian Vettel earlier said that it would be wrong for the Russian Grand Prix to go ahead. Meanwhile, Haas Formula 1 team boss Gunther Steiner confirmed that his team's Russian racer Nikita Mespin faces an uncertain future as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The team's association with Russian potash producer company Ural Kali remains in doubt and Mayspin's status as a driver may be under threat with the potential for visa bans being imposed on Russian nationals. Mayspin had been signed last year as part of title sponsorship deal involving Ural Kali which is a company owned by his billionaire father Dimitri Mayspin. Incidentally, Dimitri happens to be a close associate of Vladimir Putin. Now moving from F1 to volleyball. Russia is set to host the World Championships from August 26 to September 11, with group matches held across several cities and the final round of games in Moscow. The International Volleyball Federation released a statement to writers stating, while the FIVV believes that sport should always remain separate from politics, we are closely monitoring the situation to ensure the safety and the well-being of all participants at our events, which is our top priority. Meanwhile, reigning Olympic champions France will not participate in the World Volleyball Tournament if the event remains in Russia. Now moving to basketball. The Euroleague of Basketball suspended three games against Russian teams Zenit Barcelona, Baskonia Unix Kazan and Bayern Munich CSKA Moscow. American Maurice Creek a former basketball player with Indiana and George Washington University currently playing overseas in Ukraine told reporters that he is stuck in Ukraine amid Russia's attacks and is in desperate need of help as he has been bouncing between his apartment and bomb shelters to try and stay safe. On the other hand, UK has cancelled the visas of Belarusian men's basketball team who were set to play in Britain on Monday due to the country being complicit with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The two countries were set to play a World Cup qualifier in Newcastle. As far as tennis is concerned, the ATP Tour has postponed the Moscow CH80 tournament that was scheduled to take place at the end of February in Russia. Meanwhile, following the semi-final win in the Dubai Tennis Championships on Friday, world number 7 Andrey Rublev, a Russian star, left a message on the camera. No war, please, he wrote. The 24-year-old received a large round of applause from the audience after he wrote the message. World number one Daniel Medvedev took the time in his post-game interview on Thursday at the Mexican Open to express his wish for peace in the world. So that's all for today, guys. Our hearts go out to all the Ukrainian citizens as well as the soldiers from the two countries taking part in this war. May this war stop as quickly as possible. A single loss of life can have a huge impact on a family. On that note, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving sports. Bye-bye.